You know, guys, I always believed that bugs are what makes our experience as software engineers. It is the encounter and finally the, you know, getting over the hump of bugs and fixing the bug or addressing it. Because you don't always fix bugs. You just work around it sometimes and fix it and automatically it got fixed by itself. Because bugs sometimes are exposed because other things it has now related with the thing that the bug is exposed to you know if you if you if you, if you code it for a long time you know what i'm saying but essentially in this video i want to talk about a, a very interesting bug that i never run into before that i ran in the past few months actually i thought it'd make a very good podcast and to give you an idea what really happens when you run out of this randomly assigned ephemeral source ports in your TCP connections. Because I never run out of those. There, yeah, there's 65,000-ish. But man, you can run onto it if you wrote inefficient code, which in that particular case, I did. Let's jump into it. Welcome to the Backend Engineering Show with your host, Hussein Nasser. And uh, to explain uh, this bug, I, I wanted to kind of visualize the simple system. You know, I simplified it just for the sake of this video. But essentially, it's a, it's a web server and there is a message broker. And there's all other pieces of the of this system that is irrelevant here. But these are the two pieces that are critical here. So the web server that accepts connection from clients directly. This is the public uh, web server that accepts connections. Right? So clients, browsers, curls, anything that connects to the web server. And the web server submits jobs, submits messages, all sorts of thing to the message queue. And there's, there's these will get processed by further downstream services, you know, or will it will be there for certain metadata information. Okay, so here's what happened. What what happened is after uh, a few commits, something got committed to the repo, and what we noticed is the sir the system works fine. Requests are being processed very nicely, very fast, with no problem at all. You make a request to the web server, you get a response. Very nice. But after a few thousand requests, and there is no particular number, right? after a few thousand requests, the web server will stop responding all of the time. Boop. It was just a nope. I'm done. What will happen is the client will give up. So you'll give a client timeout. And if you have a proxy, which made the problem, problem a little bit worse is the proxy will time out and we'll get a proxy timeout thinking that oh there is something is happening on the server that is timing out so which kind of diluted the problem a little bit so essentially what's happened is if you talk to the web server directly and make a request after the threshold few thousand requests your request will just keep processing forever Sometimes you'll get a response after like a few minutes. But then after that, it will you'll just die. Yeah. And you will try it again. It will work. After that, it will just go down again. So what was... So that's the behavior of the... I, I usually like not to go directly to the repo. Because if I go to the repo, I, I see the comments. I see I can, I can tell what went wrong. But that's to me that's the last thing i do because first i need to investigate the problem and i have a whole course of how to troubleshoot back an application uh check it out go to performance.hussainnasser.com uh to learn more about it without even if you even if you don't have a source code you can you can technically learn about a system by just you know do a black box this thing as they say you know from the just looking at what is the behavior of this as a box and how is it communicating to each other. So, so what I did is I went to the web server. Okay? The web server in this particular case was a different machine than the message broker. So I went to the web server and it just says, all right, that's that. Give me all your connections. 
and I noticed a flood of connections, which is unusual. You shouldn't have this many connections outgoing from the web server to the message broker. You need one, right? And the message broker I used in this particular case, we used, is uh, supports uh, multiplexing, i.e. you can send multiple requests concurrently on the same connection. Yeah? So in this particular case, which, which which means that you can use one connection for pretty much every request, right? You can you, you can go crazy. You don't need another connection. So you should see one, maybe two, in case of an overloaded system, right? But we've been seeing ten thousand, twenty thousand, right? And that didn't look right. And if the system goes down, it, it goes to up to the twenty thousand connections. And so that's the alarm. But but why would that be the problem? That's the second question. All right, so you have a lot of connections. So what? So we know the problem. And I looked at the comment. I know the, even the install that caused it. But now why is the question? Always this curiosity in my mind. It's like a little bit annoying when, when people works with me. It's like, oh, no, no, no. Why? We, we know what the problem just just reverted. No, no, no. I want to understand. <laughs> You know, it's just, uh, that's, that's just, uh, that's just my nature. Yeah, it could be annoying sometimes because it slows down the process. Because once, once you understand, but, but, but then, sorry, so what? We are making a lot of connections that should not stop the web server from responding, right? So here's what happened. We essentially, long story short, we ran out of the ephemeral ports in that machine. So what does that mean? So this requires a little bit of understanding of how TCP works. You see, when you can establish a connection uh, between a client and a server, uh, the, you are essentially connecting to a well-known IP address and a well-known port. That is often, if you're secure, like in HTTPS, 443 and the IP address is also fixed right after you do a DNS you get you get a load of IP addresses if you have you know uh, redundancy but then eventually you only pick one so then you pick that and you connect so you know the port so you know the source uh the destination or IP the destination port but uh you know the source port uh, sorry the source IP that's your IP address and let's ignore NAT for, for simplicity here. So the source IP is known, but the only one variant is the source port. And this is the kernel's job to assign a random source port so that it completes the four tuples, the four entries. I always get confused with the word tuple. Okay, so these four entries, so that, that fourth thing port so it will assign random from i think it's the even the ephemeral port has a range right let me look it up actually so i can give you that uh, ephemeral port range so yeah i'm seeing here from 32,768 up until 60,999 because we're talking about uh ipv4 here uh, the port is 32 bit Right, so that's sixty-five thousand. So you have a range of thirty thousand, which kind of lines up with whatever I'm seeing. When it gets to the twenty thousand, twenty-five thousand, we we start seeing the problem. So eventually, in this particular case, the web server IP address is known, fixed. The destination IP address is known. That's the message queue, right? IP address. The destination port is known. That's the port of the listener on the message queue, right? And the source port is basically ephemeral that is generated. So you get only what? Based on these, knowing that these two is, are fixed, right? The source IP is fixed. The destination IP is fixed. The destination port is fixed. You get only, so you get only 20,000-ish, 25,000 ports. That means you get 25,000 connection from here to here. You might say it's, it's low. It's not low number. It's it's enough for what you need to because remember, 
this is while fixing the, the host, the client. In this case, the web server is the client and the destination, the backend is the message queue, right? And these are fixed. So what's happening is eventually we discovered that every request incorrectly, every request from the client, which also has a connection by the way, but this is, this is not a problem, right? The client to the web server is not a problem. You might say, why? Well, the destination is known, the web server, the destination IP is known, the destination port is known, the web server port 80 or 443, but the clients change. You don't have one client establishing 100,000 connections. No, you have 100,000 clients establishing a connection each. So that's, you can go crazy with that number, right? So the IP address, the source IP address change in this particular case. The source port, of course, for each source IP address, you get all these, again, the 20,000 or 30,000, whatever, source IP address, right? And these ranges, by the way, if you look up at this table, I'll put it on the screen. Uh, it's filled, it's different for Windows, different for Linux, different for other, you know, other uh, kernels. So, what was happening? The problem is, Clients were connecting, clients were sending requests, and then for every request, the web server was supposed to look up a backend connection and establish uh, this connection to the backend, which is the message queue, if it's not established. If there is an existing connection, write whatever you want to write to the message queue, right? Sometimes you need the message queue, sometimes some requests don't need it at all, right? It's this problem. The bug was in the web server and specifically this logic that connects to this message queue. Incorrectly, we were, for every request, we're creating a new connection regardless. Every request, create a new connection, send. Every request, create a new connection, send. For every request, we were creating a new connection. So we were leaving all these connections just idle right so you might say okay idols well there is a timeout in the tcp so they eventually die and that's what would happen right they will eventually these connections will die but what makes things worse is there was custom client logic i mean client here is the web server that essentially kept intentionally kept the connections alive by doing something like web sockets it's not really web socket it's good have you heard of ping pong uh protocol in WebSocket. It's an, uh, it's, it's an, it's an application layer seven, uh, keep alive mechanism, not the TCP keep alive, the higher than that, not the kernel keeping the connection alive. It's the application sending essentially nothing, right? Just, just to tell the client, hey, I'm still using it. I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. So it's just chatter. Essentially. It's just ping pong, ping pong. Right? So that, that kept the problem as well because we're now maintaining all this. So that, that added a little bit of an overhead to maintain all these connections that we don't really need to. Second, we were keeping those connections and they taken resources. And eventually, once we reach that threshold, the ephemeral port, new requests, what will happen is, our new request, remember this, these are, Gotta be careful of that. Synchronous request. Now the client, I don't care about the client. The client is asynchronous. The web server received this request is synchronous, i.e. it is blocking the request. It's making the, the, the a backend request to the message queue while the request blocked. Until it received a response from the message queue, it will unblock the request and it will send the response, right? It's stuck at this stage where it says there all right i cannot respond to this guy until i get something from message queue but guess what we were stuck in essentially the kernel we couldn't even create a connection so the web server got berserk and eventually other apps started to break because other apps needs to connect to the to that machine for some reason or another. And that also broke something that consumed some of the ephemeral ports. And it, it, it becomes very interesting, right? 
So yeah, you don't have much to be honest to, to run out of that from a report. So after I uh, we identified that problem, we saw that like, okay, fair enough. Here's the bug. We're instead of actually looking up for existing connection, we're always creating a new one. Uh, we fixed that. All is good. Happy, happy, happy. We have back to one beautiful connection. So one resource can give you so much. You can go so far with one connection. So beautiful. Indeed. Very, very beautiful. So I then started looking up. It's like, is this really a problem people run into? Because it, it, it seems like an easy thing to run into. And fair enough. Uh, Cloudflare has a nice blog about it. And running out of ephemeral ports. Things can get really wrong, you know, if that started to happen. And I think the, the, the biggest problem that you're going to start having is <laughs> if you're if you're not on the same machine no if you are on the same machine you're gonna make yeah, see it even worse <laughs> because what was happening is the the source ip to the let's say you're connected to local host let's, let's ignore ipv6 for for a second say only ipv4 right so 127001 you're connecting to port 80 locally right and then the source port is also known 127700001 right so you're connecting locally you have a loop back connections for one reason or another you're using the tcp ip i always say try to shift away from that you can't always do that like you can use ipv uh, ipc for that but sometimes you can't do that especially if you want to use side proxies Right, where you, where you want two containers having the same loop back and they want to connect to each other to enable essentially sidecar proxying to work, right? You need to this capability to CPIB to do that. So then uh, you can essentially also run off your ephemeral loop back ports. As long as the fixed, the source, the destination port, the destination IP, is fixed you and of course the source ip is fixed you have this twenty thousand limit thirty thousand limit whatever the kernel allows it right but then but then what if i connect to another port completely a different one 21 like right 22 is the ssh or 21 21 is ftp 22 right i want to connect to that you can technically reuse those ephemeral ports because those are different now it's a different tuple but some kernels don't even allow that because it sometimes break applications because the uniqueness of source ports they are treated as just unique by itself not the they some application don't take the four tuples they take this two tuples which is of course not a good idea but it sometimes break applications so even some kernels just don't allow you to reuse ports even across destination ports if that makes sense which makes the problem uh, even more interesting so I'll, I'll reference that blog for you guys to to read but yeah that's what i want to talk about today so yeah i thought uh, i thought this was an interesting uh, bug that i'll, I'll share, share with you guys see you in the next one goodbye